Hey, this month I'm very happy to welcome Greg Turnquist to the Persistence Hub with his session about working with a distributed database with Hibernate. Greg is working as the senior staff technical content engineer at Cockroach Labs, an eight times author. And some of you also might know him here from the ProCoder uh, YouTube channel as well. Welcome, Greg. What did you share in your session? Well, one of the things we covered was, I mean, what if you, what if you, what if you love relational databases, just like every, I don't know, business analyst, tech, tech leaning program manager, they, everybody likes SQL. So what if you're able to tell them I've got this cloud scale database that I don't know, it can survive region level failures. Um, but also works just fine with my Spring Data JPA app or my, you know, whatever stack I'm using, whether I'm using JDBC template to hibernate to Spring Data JPA, any of these things, I can just use what I already know. Um, you know, for example, you know, this is this is a fun toy app that we looked at where I, I store my, uh, the staff of my company here. I happen to employ Frodo and Bilbo Baggins and Samwise Gamgee. I'm storing them in a, in a good old relational database, but I need to do stuff like, um, if I'm using Spring Data JPA and I've got these operations and I, you know, I'm, I'm going to delete from the table. So I had, I had three people loaded. I deleted two, but what if, what if I had a database that let me survive, uh, you know, not only those regional failures that I talked about, but we also could, for example, look back in time. Select star from employee as of system time minus 60 seconds. And I can see that the, the row that I just deleted has now somehow magically come back to me. What does that mean? What am I able to, am I able to keep that forever? Or am I able to keep a, a history of it for forever? Or is there a certain window do I have? What does that mean from a performance perspective? What if I have, a, I'm running a cluster. I have a re, I have, nodes running in San Francisco, New York, London, and Berlin. So I have my system spread across the enterprise. And how does my app handle that? Um, what, what's the, what is, if I'm going to have this high availability and, and sustainment while also having a consistent and available thing, is, are there performance issues with that? Is it going to take me longer to fetch a given row of data? Or are there, are there solutions that this thing offers me to deal with that? You know? Maybe I've got the kind of data that needs to be everywhere simultaneously, but I don't, it's not high performance data. It's not being updated a thousand times a second, but it's maybe like user login data. Uh, how, do, how can I solve that with a distributed database like that? What if my app actually instead has map based data? Like perhaps I, I broker, you know, where you can go order a pizza from a local pizza store down the road and somebody is going to go fetch it and bring it to your house. Can my distributed database handle that? Um, where that kind of regional data is divvied up in a different way so that there's local stuff stored nearby me so I don't have to, I'm in San Francisco ordering from a San Francisco pizza shop. I don't need to fetch any data to complete the transaction from Germany. But uh, my learned colleague who's in Germany is ordering a pizza from his local shop. Does he have to come to the San Francisco node to fetch that? Maybe, maybe not. That's some of the stuff we cover in what we actually get with a distributed database. Not only, not only is there a way to survive failures, but we can actually thrive and optimize data to actually serve us instead of us serving the data to make it kind of fit into stuff. This is the kind of stuff that I like to think about that CockroachDB empowers us to do. And I get to do it all using Spring Data JPA or, or JDBC template or whatever. My favorite tech stacks work just fine with this. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Greg, for this really interesting uh, session. I personally learned a lot and we had quite a good discussion on, on several things here. So for everyone who wants to watch the entire session, please head over to the Persistence Hub and join. This also gives you access to all my video courses, lots of other expert sessions, monthly Java Persistence News episodes and coding problems. So yeah, see you in the Persistence Hub.